I love type safety because it makes my code higher quality, but CSS is kind of the wild west where anything goes and there's no type safety at all. That is until now. We finally have a feature in CSS that was just introduced into all browsers that adds type safety into CSS, or at least kind of. And in this video, I wanna talk about what this new feature is, what it means for CSS, and why it's going to be incredibly important. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And one of the coolest innovations to CSS in the last 10 years has been the ability to create CSS variables. For example, I have this color variable that I've created right here. It defaults to the value of orange, but in my box one here, I'm setting the color to light blue. So you can see box one is light blue and box two is going to be this orange color. This is one of the best features to CSS, but the problem is, is there's absolutely no type safety or autocomplete at all. For example, I could say that this is actually 10 pixels. If I give it a save, you can see obviously the color doesn't work, but if I actually inspect this and look at my development tools, you can see that it says color is defined as an accurate variable. It says, you know, it has a value of 10 pixels. That's A-OK -okay with us, even though I'm using it for a background color, which only accepts colors. For example, if I tried to set this to 10 pixels, I'm going to get an error right inside of here telling me this is an invalid property. This is where the brand new at properties CSS feature comes in. This isn't actually that new of a feature. It's been around since about 2021, 2022, but Firefox just recently added it. So it's now available in all major browsers. And if we scroll down, this is relatively easy syntax to understand. All we use is this at property keyword, followed by the name of the custom property we want. And then we need to define three different things. We define the syntax for what different types this accepts. It's a rather complicated syntax. I'll talk about more of how it actually works in a second. We also talk about whether or not this inherits or not, which is really nice because now we can create custom properties that actually inherit down into children, just like how, for example, font size is going to inherit or something like that. And then finally, we give it an initial value of what we want this to actually look like. So what we can do is just define that inside of here. So we'll come out of our box. We'll create an app property. We're gonna call this box color. Doesn't really matter what we name it. For the syntax, we want this to be a color. So we're gonna come in here with that color syntax, just like that, then put down a semicolon. Inherits is going to be set to false because we're gonna leave this kind of default. The colors don't normally inherit. And then we'll set an initial value. Right now we have the initial value set to orange. So we're gonna use that same orange initial value in here. And now I can use that box color. For example, I could say that my box color is going to go here. And to access this, you access it just like a normal variable. So we're gonna say var box color. Down here, I can then set my box color and let's set it back to light blue. And if we've done all this correctly, we should see when we come over here, everything works exactly the same as it did before. So really all we've done is create a custom variable, but give it a little bit of parameters of exactly what that custom variable is. Now you will notice if I try to change this to 10 pixels instead of light blue, inside my editor, I'm still not gonna get any feedback and it's gonna fall back to that default value. And that's because it actually recognizes that this is an invalid property. And when I inspect my page, we'll see if we come in here, it actually X's out saying 10 pixels is not a valid value. And instead it must be a color. I even get autocomplete inside of here because it knows it must be a color based on what I defined. And if I set it to a color and come back over here, you can see it's changed the color. Now this is already nice because it gives us slightly more features than a normal custom property inside of CSS, because now we can actually make sure that if we enter an invalid value, such as this 10 pixels, it's just gonna fall back to whatever the initial value is and ignore it. And we can also set up the ability to make this so it actually inherits. So if I were to come in here and say that the inherit is actually going to be true, and let's say that I change this to light blue, just like that. And then inside of here, I'm gonna put another div. So we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna put a child div. We'll give it a class of child say child just like that. And we're gonna to need to give the child some size so we can see it. So I'll say child, and we'll say that the width is 50 pixels, height 50 pixels. So now at least our child should show up. And what we need to do to be able to see it is just move it. So I'll just position it, whoops, position, absolute. And I'll say top zero left is gonna be 100 pixels. And there we go, we can now see our child is over here. Now, if we go ahead and we actually make it so that our child shows up as a box, we can just give it that box class just like this. So now essentially my thing has a background color being set based on this box color and it should be inheriting down. So if I were to change my child and put it inside of box one, we'll see that it'll change to light blue because it's inheriting this color from box one. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take this 
I'm gonna put it inside of my box number one. And now you can see that my child has become a blue color because it's inheriting this box color from its parent. This is something you could not do with normal custom properties, but something that we can do using this inherits. And we can also turn this off by just saying false. And now you can see it defaults back to that orange color because it's no longer inheriting. Now, another thing we can do with this is we can actually define these in JavaScript if we want. We can just say window.css.register property, give it a name, syntax inherits an initial value, the exact same syntax that we did up here. And that'll create a CSS custom property for us directly inside of JavaScript. So we can do it both in CSS or in JavaScript, which is really nice because depending on what language framework or tools you're using, you may want to do this in JavaScript or in CSS. Now you did notice some of the downsides of how this works right now. As you can see, my op property syntax right here, the actual syntax highlighting is horrible. There's no autocomplete. It really doesn't work super well inside of VS Code. It even says that this is an experimental property and so on, even though it's not experimental because it works in all browsers, this is something that needs to be updated in VS Code. Also, I get no autocomplete here. You can see no autocomplete. If I type in a wrong value, it doesn't give me any errors. Again, this is something that needs to be fixed inside of VS Code. And there's actually an open issue on the VS Code GitHub repository for this exact issue. It's been around for almost two years now since 2022. So it's something that should be fixed. And I now think that since the property support is inside of all browsers, this is hopefully something that you're going to look into and actually try to prioritize over some of the other issues because I really see this being something amazing for CSS. Now, the final thing I want to talk about with this property is how we actually define these different syntaxes because it's a really confusing syntax to actually determine what type something can be. So for example, if we go to look at background color and we scroll down, you'll find this section called formal definition. It's on every single page for every single property in MDN. And it'll tell us the initial value, which is the same thing that we define here. It tells me whether it's not inherited. Again, same thing I define right here. And then finally, if we scroll down a little further, it gives me the formal syntax. That's what goes in this syntax section. And if it's something like background color, you can see normally it just accepts a color and nothing else. But there are many other more complex types. For example, the display property is actually much more complex. You can see that the display is going to be all of this stuff is the formal syntax for display. And you can see it has lots of different separators and it even has more definitions down here for what each individual piece is going to be. But if we look at any of this and you're confused by how it works, you can highlight over any of these blue things and it'll actually give you a pop-up that tells you exactly what it is or you can click on it and it'll give you an exact definition of exactly how it works. So essentially the way that this works at a high level is if you have something inside of brackets, it works just like parentheses inside of like an equation. So it's saying that these two things are grouped together inside of one and they act as one cohesive unit. If you have an or symbol with just a single bar, so a single pipe on this right hand side over here, I will give it a quick highlight this, that is essentially an or operation. It's saying it's either going to be this or it's going to be this. And since we have a bunch of them, it's also either going to be this or this or this or this. It's going to be one of any of these different properties right here. Now, if you have this double pipe symbol, this or syntax, that essentially means it's going to be one or more of these in this particular order. So it's either going to be just display outside or it's going to be display outside and display inside combined together into one particular thing. A great example of this is the CSS flex property. For example, I could set a flex of one or I could come in here and say flex one, zero, and zero percent, for example. I can define both of those, and it's essentially using the double pipe or symbol to denote that it could be one, or it could be multiple, or it could be some combination of the in-between. Now, the final type of symbol that you may see is going to be the double ampersand, and that works just like an and symbol. And then finally, a question mark just means that this thing is optional. You do need to add it, or you don't need to add it. It's entirely up to whether or not you want to add it. Now, the nice thing, though, is that you don't need to understand the in and outs of exactly how all of this syntax work because obviously you can read the documentation if you're confused on how a particular thing works. But generally when you're defining custom properties, it's probably going to be something like this where it's a color or maybe it's a length unit. For example, if you want to do like 10 pixels, it's going to be relatively simple. Or maybe you may have the option to do one thing or another thing. For example, in this case, I can do a color or a length and that's what that syntax is going to look like. So it's generally going to be rather simple. What you do is just going to be one of the major CSS types like length, color, and so on. And you're just going to throw that in there. You can even make it so it can be just a certain specific property. For example, I can make it so that this is absolute or relative. And now I can either put in the value of absolute or relative, but nothing else will work. So for example, if I make this absolute and I make this relative, so it actually has a legit default value. And then here I'm going to put the box color as just something that is not correct. Now we'll give this a save. I'll even make just 10 pixels. There we go. 
Now, if I inspect my page, we should see if I actually look at my box one, that it's going to be correct. So I click on box one, you can see box color is correct. Now, if I go ahead and open this up and look at my child, you'll see it gives me an error again, saying that this is an invalid property type because it must be either absolute or relative. Also at the beginning of the video, I mentioned how I did get autocomplete inside of here for the different colors and so on. If I actually check, you can see it's giving me autocomplete on colors still. I think it might just because this says color in the name of it. Let's try to change this to box just T. It doesn't really matter what it is. We'll just change all these to box T and we'll see if we get the exact same autocomplete. So if I come into here, you can see it's still trying to autocomplete the colors and pretty much every valid CSS syntax. So I don't really know exactly why it's doing that, but we're not getting the autocomplete we would expect inside of here. That's again, something that's hopefully going to be added into the browser as we start to see more popularity of this app property syntax now that it's actually available in all different browsers. Now, right now, this app property syntax isn't quite where I want it to be with all the developer tooling, but I'm hopeful that that is actually going to be fixed relatively quickly, and we're going to get a really nice type safe experience to work with inside of CSS. Now, if you want to learn everything there is to know about CSS, I highly recommend checking out my CSS course. It's going to be linked down in the description below. It covers everything you need to know about CSS from the absolute beginner stuff, all the way to more advanced things like responsive design, app properties, and so on. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you check that out. It'll be linked in the description below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.